I have personally audited hundreds of Facebook ad accounts in the e-commerce space. I've managed over 80 million in ad spend during that time, and I've generated over 200 million in directly attributable revenue for the businesses that I work with. And this is what I've learned about ad account structure. Because yes, it is important how you set up your ad account. Because if you set up your account the wrong way, for every dollar you spend, you lose incremental value to your business. Conversely, if you set it up the right way, you're maximizing profits, which allows you to outbid your competition on the front end, decrease your CAC or customer acquisition cost, and grow exponentially. Let's take a look. So here's how most people test ad creatives on Facebook, right? You have your ABO campaign. Sometimes it's a CBO or an ASC, but you have your ABO campaign, ad set budget optimization, and then you test different audiences at the ad set level. So you have an ad set with an interest group, an ad set with a 10% lookalike audience, an ad set with a 1% lookalike audience. Maybe you'll even throw something like broad targeting in there, or maybe you'll stack a bunch of different interest groups and lookalikes together inside one ad set to maximize the size of the audience, right? And then, so you have audience testing at the ad set level. At the ad level, you're testing the exact same creatives across all of the different audiences, right? So like these are the same ads, add one, add one, add one, all the same across all of the ad sets. And then you're also testing multiple variables at the ad level. So maybe ad number one is an image. Ad number two is an image, but it's more product focused, whereas ad number one is more engagement focused. And then ad number three is a random UGC video right? And what this results in is cannibalization of spend. Look, you're new to e-commerce or you maybe you've been doing e-commerce for a little while and you don't know how to maximize the performance of Facebook ads. I've been in your shoes. I work with businesses all the time in your shoes. And when you are a new business and you don't have a lot of money to just throw around and test, maybe you're working with a $50 a day budget. Maybe you're working with a hundred or $200 a day budget. You have to be very intentional where you put that money. And there are a lot of fancy, shiny objects that you could purchase with that money on a daily basis, like audience testing, or you could stick to the fundamentals of what gives you the highest leverage. In all situations, that is going to lead to ad creative. And so the main flaw of this system, there's two main flaws really, but the main flaw in this system is that we reduce the amount of ad creative that we can test because we prioritize testing the audience, right? Because we have to split our audiences into multiple different buckets to test the same ads. The second flaw is that we're not isolating one variable at the ad level, so we're not gonna be able to get conclusive creative learnings. We don't know why a certain ad is doing well or not. We can't point to the very specific variable that we changed with all of our variations and say that's the reason why this ad did better than the other ones and build off of that, right? Those are the two main flaws. And the third one is ultimately opportunity cost because if instead you consolidate, right? So you don't do audience testing, but you consolidate all of your tests. So you have, this is a separate test. This is a separate test and this is a separate test. Let's say you're doing 50 bucks a day on all of them, right? It's like $50 a day. And then we have that for the interest group. We have that for the 10% lookalike. We have that for the 1% lookalike. So we're spending 150 bucks a day across all three ad sets to test three ads, right? As opposed to 50 bucks a day on ad concept one, 50 bucks a day on ad concept two, and 50 bucks a day on ad concept three. Not only are we able to test creative three times as fast, but we get to reach new users at a cheaper cost because anytime we use audience testing, Meta will upcharge us on the CPM level or cost per 1,000 impressions, right? And if we do find an ad is doing really well, let's say this one's a winner, it just is crushing for us, right? It's doing really well. Well. When we're running broad targeting, which is no audience restrictions, this ad is going to be able to scale 
so much easier and faster because over here we have audience testing and a 10% lookalike or a 1% lookalike or an interest group is going to fatigue. So we're not gonna be able to scale this winning asset, right? Let's say we get the same scale. We're not gonna be able to scale this winning asset to 10,000 bucks a day, 20,000 bucks a day, or even a 1,000 bucks a day with an interest group that has a limited audience size. Because remember, when your audience size is small, that means that the qualified user pool within that audience is also small. So if you have an interest group that's say a million people, very small percentage of those users are going to react positively to your ad and an even smaller percent are gonna be able to buy from you. Versus broad targeting where you, we have everybody in a, in a region like United States, 330 million for example, you get to target everybody, yes, theoretically, but the algorithm is smart enough to go ahead and say, hey, if this is a winning ad, now we have a group of people of 330 million, not 1 million or 5 million, 330 million, many, many, many multiples larger, so that if we do want to scale this ad, we have a greater chance at that ad holding at a higher scale, and we get to spend less money over time because broad targeting is always cheaper than audience testing. And, and the, the benefits keep going, guys. Like, I'm not even exaggerating here. There are so many benefits. And because we're testing our ads at 3x the volume, our ad account scale potential goes up like this over time because it compounds, right? So it's like week one, you only get to test one set of ads. Week two, you're, you're still only testing maybe one new set of ads on all of these audiences. Whereas over here, week one, you're testing three sets of ads. Week two, you're testing three, sex, uh, three sets of ads. That's six sets of ads times two. And you, it just compounds over and over and over and over again over time to the point where you've tested so many ads with this method that you're able to capitalize on your creative learnings so much quicker. And so you'll understand why this video creative did so well. And then next week you'll build an iteration of this concept and that does well. And then next week you'll build another iteration and you'll learn and you continuously learn and it gets better and better over time. Additionally, changing one variable at a time at the ad level. So all of them are gonna be videos. All of them are gonna be videos. All of them are gonna be videos. Maybe, you know, this one's an image, right? So you have images, um, all, all of them being the same image, right? But you change one thing. Maybe you change the headline, right? And I'll show you an example of what that looks like with one variable changed. Look how all of these have the same headline, hiring a media buyer, hiring a media buyer, hiring a media buyer, right? These are ads that I'm running. But what's changed? What's the one variable that's changed? It's where the location of my face and the graphics are, right? So it's like a visual adaptation on the same ad. Conversely, I could go ahead and I could change the headline. I could say, do you want a world-class media buyer? Are you hiring a media buyer? Are your Facebook ads not performing? All three different headlines, but keep the same visual style. So I use this image of me and this subheading and these logos on all of them versus the way that I've changed up the style on all of these other ones, right? We have one marketing angle as well, very important. One creative style, which is a graphic image, and we're only changing one variable. Guys, I, I promise if you listen to me, and this is how I structure ad accounts that have spent $150 million plus, right? If you listen to this and you multiply your speed of creative testing in exchange for audience testing, which is obsolete these days anyway, because the algorithm is so smart, I promise you that over time, if you stick with the strategy, not only will you learn what works with Facebook ads for your business, but you will make more money. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, really does help with the algorithm, and until next time, take care.